Hello everyone and welcome back to Solid State Physics in a Nutshell, brought to you by the Physics Department at the Colorado School of Mines. I'm Eric. And I'm Nicole. Now that we've developed a fair bit of math concerning diffraction, today our goal is to introduce a construction known as the Ewald Sphere. This will help us look at how diffraction measurements work geometrically in single crystal materials. To save all of you from our poor 3D drawing skills, we'll be sticking with 2D, but the premise still holds. Let's start by imagining a single crystal in 2D with the following reciprocal lattice. The tail of our minus k vector sits at the origin. Then if we draw k prime out like so, delta k would just be this line here. Yeah, but what happens is we shift our detector. Then we would need to redraw k prime and thus get a different delta k. If we continue moving the detector, we may eventually reach a configuration where delta k equals g at some HKL. And as we rotate our detector through all possible configurations, we effectively carve out a circle, or sphere in 3D, where the circle is a surface of all possible delta k conditions. So at the end of the day, the Ewald sphere is a geometric way to visualize how and when we get constructive interference. But Eric, we only hit two reciprocal lattice points after moving the detector a considerable amount. Seems like we're not actually measuring much of a reciprocal space with our detector. Yeah, so there are three ways to find conditions for constructive interference. We could move our source relative to our sample, and that would shift the center of our Ewald sphere in reciprocal space. Couldn't we also change the wavelength? Since the magnitude of k in k prime is 2 pi over lambda, a smaller wavelength should make the sphere bigger. And a bigger sphere is more likely to intersect more points for a given change. Right, and the last thing we could do is tilt the sample. That is, we would have a fixed Ewald sphere and drag the reciprocal lattice around this delta k surface we mentioned earlier. So in short, the Ewald sphere is a geometric interpretation of the delta k equals g interference condition. That's it in a nutshell. Later we're going to come back to this condition for different types of experimental scans, but for now we'll leave you with some questions to consider. First, we mentioned before how changing the wavelength of the source can change the size of the Ewald sphere. What is the biggest wavelength you can use and still get scattering? And what wavelengths and corresponding sources would you expect for diffraction of single crystals with real space lattice spacing of about 5 angstroms? And second, in electron microscopy, the energy of the source is typically much higher than for X-ray diffraction. How would an Ewald sphere created from electrons compare to one from X-rays? And with that, we're done with the Ewald sphere. In the next video, we'll look at diffraction in polycrystalline powders. Thanks for watching Solid State Physics in a Nutshell. See you next time.